good afternoon, everybody. Last time we ended on when we were just starting to evaluate the lungs. So that's where we'll begin. So when we talk about the lungs on chest x-ray, when you're looking at them, you want to make sure that they're about the same size and density. And then an important feature of them is that as you go from central to peripheral, the vessels and the bronchi should get progressively smaller. And then the outer about one third of the chest x-ray, it's really, you shouldn't really see any lines because the vessels and the bronchi are so small that they should really not be visible. And then as you know, each lung is divided into lobes. And uh, I ask my residents to also know each segment within the lobe. So there's 10 on the right and nine on the left. And what's important about them on the chest x-ray, the, the lobes that is, is that the upper lobes can also be considered the anterior lobes, okay? And that the lower lobes are posterior. And note how far superiorly the lower lobe comes up, right? So it's not really a cranial caudal thing as much as it is an AP phenomenon. So when you have the upper lobe and the on the right and left, the upper lobe actually goes down quite far and the lower lobe comes up quite far too. But the upper lobe and on the left, the lingula and the right middle lobe border the heart because the heart is the an anterior structure. And the lower lobes have a large contact with the diaphragm. Okay. So that's an important finding for us, um, especially when we want to localize things. And so let's talk about a few disease entities and we'll start with lobar pneumonia. This is just a uniform area of lung infection and we call it lobar because it encompasses an entire lobe or the majority of the lobe and it's bounded by the fissure. And here's a gross image of a uh, right upper lobe pneumonia. Um, so on chest x-ray, we try to localize things based on the lobe. So which lobe is this that has the pneumonia? And I'm talking about, so there's this is actually multifocal pneumonia, but I'm talking about this right here. Oops. Keep advancing. So... Most people say right upper lobe. Some people say right middle lobe. Looks like most people, some people are changing their answer. But yes, this is the right upper lobe. This is the right upper lobe. And inferiorly, it's bounded by the minor fissure. And so down here is the right middle lobe. Okay, let's keep going. We'll talk about that more. And you can see it well on the lateral view. So this is the minor fissure and this is the major fissure. And all of this consolidation is in the right upper lobe. And here's an example of a right middle lobe pneumonia. Okay, notice how it borders the heart on the lateral view. It's superimposed over the heart. And part of the right heart border is a little bit ill-defined on the frontal view. Okay, and just here's a here's an example of COVID. I just want, I'm sure you've seen patients with COVID now, but COVID tends to present bilaterally with patchy bilateral airspace disease usually in the periphery of the lung, but not always. This one is not. And a few days later, it cleared up. Okay, so let's talk about the silhouette sign, and I'll show you more examples of pneumonia. But this is an important principle that I want you to understand. Here, I've taken an x-ray of a syringe that is inside of a cup, and the cup is empty. There's nothing inside the cup, okay? And the syringe has saline inside of it. This is sort of like a model of the chest because the chest is filled with air, just like this cup. And the syringe in the middle is like the heart, which is of water density, it's saline. But if we go to the next picture, I filled the cup up with water and now you can essentially, you, you can't see the syringe anymore because it looks like a, just a cup of water right? So this is, a, this is maybe what would happen if a patient has diffuse pneumonia in both lungs, which is not that common, but 
this would would be what it looked like the heart would be the heart borders would be invisible but i'm about to show you a picture where i take the cup i take the syringe out of the cup and i put it behind the cup of water so what do you think would happen do you think we would still be able to see the syringe or would we would the syringe still be invisible Oh, so this is this is our example where there's diffuse pneumonia in both lungs. We don't see the heart. Okay, so I'm about to show you the picture where I took the syringe out of the cup of water and I put it behind the cup. Will we be able to see the syringe? Okay, most people said no. <clears throat> Let me show you. So here it is. So I took the cup out. Uh, I took the syringe out and it's it now the syringe is surrounded by air again. So the reason why we can see it is because the syringe, which is water density, is bordered by air. So previously it was inside the cup, so it looked like just one big blob, but now the syringe is surrounded by air again, so we can see it. It's still a little bit harder to see, but we can see it, right? And and that is that is the principle behind the silhouette sign. So the borders of structures are seen because of differences in density, okay? So I'm gonna show you some examples of that, but we remember this picture here and where the upper lobes, middle lobe and lower lobes are. So how about this? And I'm, I'm just going to tell you, give you a hint here, that in this picture, we lose the right heart border. Okay? So there's, there's something right here. And what I want you to tell me is which lobe it's in. And the hint that I'm going to give you is that the right heart border is obscured in this picture. Okay, let's see. All right, so most people said that, that that's in the right middle lobe, which is correct. So the reason why it's in the we can say confidently that it's in the right middle lobe is because the middle lobe abuts the right heart border. And in this case, we don't see the right heart border anymore. And that is because there's something of water density, the same density, pneumonia, next to the water density of the heart. Does that make sense? So <clears throat> it's like you had, uh, it's like you had two water balloons and instead of be them being separated, you put them together. If you were to take an X-ray of two water balloons that are stuck together, it would look like one big water balloon, right? And the same is here. It's like the pneumonia is water density, the heart is water density, and they're right next to each other. So this is a right middle lobe pneumonia. Okay, how about here? Here's an opacity right here. The hint is that the opacity is here and it is in the same plane as the heart, but we see the left heart border very clearly. <clears throat> so it's in the same plane. I mean, it's in the same um, lateral plane, I guess, or maybe anterior plane posterior plane. That's right. It's in the left upper lobe. Uh, I'm sorry, left lower lobe. <coughs> so because we still see the left heart border, we know it can't be in the same um, horizontal plane. It's in the same AP plane, but it's not in the same horizontal plane. In other words, it's not next to the heart. This is behind the heart. This pneumonia is behind the heart. Right, so if we this here's the lateral view, and you can see the consolidation is behind the heart. So therefore, we can still. That's why we can still see the left heart border on the frontal view. Okay, does that make sense? And I'll just give you another example here. So in this example, both the right heart border and the diaphragm are obscured, and so the question is which lobes are collapsed both the middle lobe and the lower lobe are collapsed here because we lose both the right heart border and the right hemidiaphragm. And so the next question is, well, where is the lesion? Let's say this patient had a tumor in one of their bronchi. 
So the, the lesion has to be in the bronchus intermedius because the bronchus intermedius supplies air to the right middle lobe and the right lower lobe. And that's, that's what was, was happening in this case. There was a lesion in the bronchus intermedius causing collapse of those two lobes. Does that make sense? So <clears throat> that's the silhouette sign. And that this is an important sign in, in not just chest radiology, but all of radiology. So the silhouette sign in the abdomen is Riegler's sign, which is if you can see the borders of, uh, of the bowel, then that's a sign of free air in the abdomen. So in this case, notice that you don't see the, the actual wall of the bowel because you have air on one side and then you have the bowel wall, which is of water density next to the other organs in the abdomen, which are of water density. But now on the left, you have air in the abdomen. So you have bowel, which is air inside of it. Then you have bowel wall, which is of water density. And then on the other side of that, you have air. So that's why you can see this bowel loop here because there's air in the abdomen, okay? So that's the silhouette sign in action.